Hi, I'm Cal, an application engineer here at AGI, and today I'm going to show you how you can pull out individual forces from your HPOP force model and model them as vectors in 3D graphics and also report out the magnitude of those individual forces. So oftentimes when you're using HPOP, which is the high precision orbit propagator, um, folks want to be able to understand how the individual changes to, for example, their drag model actually affect the satellite overall. So this is a method for you to break out those individual forces and investigate, uh, in this example, just the drag force. So in order to create a drag vector from an HPOP satellite, um, I'm going to show you my SDK scenario that I've already built. So what we have here is a elliptical orbit in LEO between about the altitudes of 900 and about 300 kilometers. And I'm going to compute the drag vector throughout this uh, trajectory. So to do that, I'm going to open Analysis Workbench for my HPOP satellite. And I have this atmospheric drag vector that already created. Now, what that is, is a, a vector of type force model. So this is a built-in vector type for SDK. Um, and then you configure the force model that you actually want to uh, have this vector represent. So opening this up, this looks exactly like your HPOP force model would in your propagator. But in this case, you're going to turn off all the forces that you don't want to be part of this vector. So normally the central body gravity is on here. I've turned that off. I've turned off all third body gravity, all tides. I've left the drag on, and I've configured it exactly the way my HPOP drag is configured for my satellite. And I've turned off solar radiation pressure. So the only remaining force that's being computed as part of this vector is drag. Now you can interact with this vector just like any other vector within SDK. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to display it in 3D graphics, and I'm also going to display the velocity vector of my satellite. I would expect these to be collinear and in directly opposite directions, and that's a good way for me to verify that my drag's being computed correctly. So from the properties of the satellite, I'm going to add these two vectors visually, the velocity vector and the atmospheric drag vector. And then zooming to my satellite, I can see here that my atmospheric drag vector is collinear with my velocity vector and in the exact opposite direction. So this is a good sign. And of course, if I animate forward, it will stay that way. So verifying that the drag appears to be computing correctly, now I actually generated another report uh, here that will give us the magnitude of this drag acceleration, um, as well as the right ascension and declination within the satellite body frame. So this is another great way to get out data about your, uh, your accelerations from your force model. And finally, I've generated the graph here that shows the acceleration from drag on this uh, first y-axis, and that's this black line here in meters per second squared. And that's correlated to the altitude of the spacecraft. So I would expect that the drag force would go up inversely proportional to the altitude of the satellite. And that's what I see here. As the altitude increases, the drag force decreases, and vice versa. So this passes all my sniff tests, and now I have an actual representation of the drag acceleration from my HPOP force model. Thanks for watching, and as always, get in touch with us at support at agi.com with any questions.